Hey, KIC here. This is All Guns on Deck by Decaying Logic. I've been playing with a review copy of this game for the last couple days since it just came out. And with any luck, I'm going to be able to get all of this stuff set up in time because you don't really get much of a chance to do anything before all the badness starts coming to you. And I actually don't even want all these guys over here, but I need to do it anyway because I have to convert everyone to what I want before they're good to go. Oh, got little guys over here. So this is a game that involves uh, lots of clicking and lots of shooting, and if you're lucky, you win. It's not all about luck, but that absolutely helps as it so happens. So we have a bunch of, I don't know, jets flying around, a bunch of guys who are falling out of them, who are using their parachutes to land. And you have to click on them to get rid of them. That's kind of annoying. I'm not going to lie about that. Now, I'm trying to do all of this stuff in a really short order because I literally just started a brand new game. Because if you know me, you know, I like to just jump right in right from the beginning. I, I don't like to, well, beginning of the action. I don't like to fool around with a bunch of menus and all that stuff. I'd rather just show you the game straight out. You know, you can take over the guns, as I am doing so by now, holding space. Let's go ahead and get everything ready for the next round here. Oh, I need to get rid of this guy. Now, what I'm doing right now, you have specialists that you can have in this game. They serve a special role. Obviously, they are called specialists. And in this case, I've been putting engineers down, well, I guess kind of in the general area where they work on things because engineers are better than standard crewmen, which is what this guy is not because he is not a standard crewman. But they are better than standard crewmen because they can repair more. So they're, they're basically you have regular crewmen and then you have a bunch of specialists. And each of the specialists serve different purposes. And in this case, I need a fireman or two. Oh man, look at that. I have all sorts of stuff going on here. All right, let's get that going. Let our firefighter work over here. And since I don't have any spare crew handy, we're just going to have to let the fire rage over there. Now... The way the game works, basically have this handy dandy world map here. And you just kind of cruise around. You pick the spots where you want to go fight. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and head back to port so I can go ahead and show you what that looks like now. We're going to enter the docks and you have this, um, I'm just going to say, kind of goofy port that you run around in. The pathfinding is atrocious. I just clicked over there. As you can see, he is now running way over here. And I'm going to let him run for a second because he'll, hmm, that's a new one. Figure out eventually that, no, I didn't actually want to be over there. I wanted to be down here, but okay. So minor details aside, let's just go ahead and hop in the store so I can kind of show you the different kinds of upgrades you're looking at. So you basically have different ships you can buy. You can find out how stuff works by grabbing, these are called chips and you drop them over here and it gives you a little bit of information about it. So, okay, this is a ship that has four gun mounts. That's actually a really important thing I'll show you about in just a moment. You can see you have different kinds of ships here. I'm being super quick about it. This one, I don't even know why you'd want this one. It only has one gun mount. It doesn't even tell you that, but maybe there's a reason for it I haven't figured out yet. So then on top of that, you can buy different weapons and these definitely do work differently. I think this is the mini gun. Yeah, I kind of like the mini gun. I'm not sure just yet. So you have different weapons. And you have your boosts, which I haven't even really showed you about yet. Now, I have a few of these already because when you start the game, you get to pick 10 boosts that you would like, or no, I said 10. You get to choose four chips that you would like to take. So I opted to take a ship chip, a gun chip, and then these two right here. So I have 10 uses of a quick regen, no uses of that one, and uh, five uses of this one, 10% of the current ship hit points. So... You can wander around on the map. Here's a quick tip. When you start the game, wander down here and go talk to this guy. You'll see a little exclamation point pops up. I've already talked to him. He basically says that, well, I'll talk about the story in just a moment, but when this giant creature ripped through his ship, he was really scared and he's glad to be on ground and he no longer needs the gun that he happens to have. So I'm going to hire some additional crewmen here. Let's just get up to 14. I don't know that I really need 14, but we're not going to mess around. We're just going straight to 14 because they actually will all have a use. Let's go over to the construction yard here. I'm not actually going to take my ship out just yet, 
But you can see this is the chip that I took. So I can have 22 personnel on here. I'm not sure why I would need 22. I mean, you can have them in different areas where different uh, crewmen in areas where I haven't even really talked about yet. So maybe that would matter. Then you can see each of the weapons I have here. This gun number two, I believe that's the one that I started with that I took as a, a chip. And then maybe this one up here, 36 is, uh, I don't know, one of those I got from the guy and one of them is a, is a chip that I got. So let's go ahead and go back to this weird guy who has no arms and looks like he's a robot. Let's get out to port so I can show you a little bit more of how this game works. Basically, you have this world map here, and I didn't even talk about this weird sea creature. That would be the one the guy was talking about. Its tentacles ripped through his ship, and uh, he was lucky to survive. So you have these different, I'll just call them encounters on the map, where you have a number. The number corresponds to the number of waves you can expect. So obviously, I have some crewmen here, some extra crewmen. I'm going to go ahead and put three of them over here. I'm going to get one as an extra firefighter and one as a tech head, assuming I click the right thing. So the tech head goes over here in the chip machine, which I can right click and it kind of zooms in for you there. It's really disorienting. I'm sorry about that. And then I'm going to go ahead and show grow Mr. Fireman over there. So I'm just going to let them take care of things for the moment. And I can just kind of explain. You have your armor and damage hull control over there. Sorry, I need to stop and click that guy. So you can see I have a bunch of engineers and one welder. The welder helps you get armor back. So you have this meter on the bottom left. That's your, those are your meters that tell you basically your status of everything. So when I lose armor, and you lose armor by getting bombed on, that sort of thing, the welder here helps get that back. The hole, damaged, the hole is damaged just by bombs and these guys who stand around and shoot at the hole with their guns. And of course we have fire firemen here. And I don't have any hazmat workers or you'd see a radiation going up. And then bounty corresponds to the amount of gold that I'm going to get if I successfully complete this mission. Now, if I am to die before I complete this mission, then I will lose all of the bounty I've acquired, and I'll just start over from where I basically am the next go round. So theoretically, I'll still get money next time because I'll have to shoot some various planes and guys down, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't get as much money. So let's go ahead and go over to the left here. This is your off-duty area. This is just where extra guys are stored. Your equipment changer, this is how I've been setting them to be of a various specialty. In fact, here, let's go ahead and take uh, this guy right quick, and I can just kind of show you that you can click around to these different things, and that'll basically do it. Here we go. I need to actually let him finish reloading that gun. That was kind of silly. In the bottom side here, we have the gun control. This is, well, here, let's, uh, let's go to another map so I can talk about that stuff a little more, and with any luck, I'll actually live in this one. I found the early game to be challenging for me. So down here, let's just go with this first. This is the reload and maintenance. Obviously, I have crewmen working this, so they reload things. Then you have the gun control over here. This allows for the AI to shoot the guns. As you can see, by the way, they have missed that plane every single time. They're terrible at it. And as you see by me taking over, when the crosshair comes on the screen, I'm not as terrible. Granted, you do need to pay attention to which guns are loaded. And oh man, there are going to be guys everywhere. Let me, let me click to get rid of them. One of the problems in the early game, of course, is you just have crummy guns. But you definitely do need to be leading your shots, as you can see I'm trying to do. And then uh, let's go ahead and get rid of this guy, and I'm going to have one more landing. I need to get rid of him. We'll talk about the last item. That was the chip machine. I kind of told you a little bit about that before with the specialist in there. Those are the chips that I have. I can use them when that meter is charged. So you see that green meter over there? So long as that meter is charged up, I can use the chip machine and use whatever chip I have in there. In this case, I don't need to because apparently I can't click on that guy, but we're good. So now let's just go ahead and take over and do a little more uh, manual fighting here because I'm not as terrible as they are. I'm not very good. I won't tell you I'm good, but you could see by how many ships I just took down there, I took down way more than the AI was. I mean, if nothing else, fire to where they're all going, right? I mean, you got a bunch of them going through the middle. Light them up in the middle. That only makes sense. They're all on the right side. Well, kind of let them lead into it a little bit like this. Let them kind of crash into everything. It makes sense. You know, it's just, I don't know. It's, uh, the AI is not very good at shooting. And maybe I need to put specialists in there. If I do, I'm not 100% sure. I'm not a big fan of this whole 
parachute and click on guys mini game. I find that to be kind of despicable, actually. Especially because I haven't even told you about the problems I have with this game yet, and I'm not a big fan of uh, talking about the negatives, but when a game has them, I feel like I have to let you know about them, right? I mean, the whole point here is I'm trying to be objective. Yes, I was provided this key, absolutely. But that doesn't mean that I'm supposed to say everything is great when in fact it's not. Now that said, I do enjoy the game. It's pretty fun and I will say once you get some better weapons, it actually gets pretty interesting. And since right now we're just kind of doing the kind of wimpy levels, it's nothing but just these regular jets and their bombs and etc. It definitely gets a little crazier now. I don't know how crazy it gets, but I've seen a couple of different ships that can come along that will really just tear open your your ship in really short order. It's pretty bad, but it's good. I mean, you need that challenge. It's part of what makes it enjoyable, right? But I did say I do have some problems with this game, and I'll show you one in just a moment because we're about done with this round. There we go. That guy on the bottom left is going to explode. The guy on the right is going to explode. All right, so look at that. Everything is successfully completed. Let's just go ahead and head back to the base, and I'm going to show you one of my biggest problems with this game and that I have made a video as a testament to my dedication to hold up my end of the bargain because I am severely annoyed as I play right now, which I'm sorry, I shouldn't be, but I am. So here's my big problem. I'm going to go into the game menu. This is it. Resume, exit to menu, quit to desktop. That's it. Now, it doesn't matter that I'm not at the very beginning menu. Just take my word for that. There are no, there's nothing in this game that lets you change the resolution, that lets you play it in windowed mode, that lets you turn the music down, that lets you turn the sound effects down, nothing. You just, this is it. You gotta deal with it. And it really drives me crazy because I don't want to just deal with it. Especially because, well, I'm not a big fan of having to play in some weird resolution. This is another good one. Is this whole dragging a chip in and out thing. Why can't I just drag another one on top of it and let it replace? This is kind of silly. I mean, it's fine. It's not a huge deal, but it is kind of silly. Let's go ahead and go back to the construction yard because we're going to swap out a gun. I just bought one. I didn't really tell you about it while I was buying it, but I bought a double barreled flak cannon. Why? Why not? Because uh I'm going to need it here. So let's go ahead and figure out which one do I want to get rid of. Looks like these bars have not been filled in yet. This is a game in early access, so it's um it's still in development. It still has some some work that it needs. We're going to get rid of that one, because that's pretty crummy. And we're going to put in the 88 millimeter flak 22. And let's go ahead and head out to sea for another mission. Another problem I have with this game is this whole dock thing. It just feels clunky. I don't understand why it's there. I'm trying to understand it. I just don't. It's weird. It could be better served by doing a menu system, by doing tabs, by doing... I don't know. Something. It just feels awkward. I don't, I don't know what else to call it other than that it just it feels awkward here we go we have some specialized ships and if i let the ai take care of it they would take forever to do that which is why i don't want to let them do that now i will take over the black cannon that is the number one gun you can see by the green little uh, highlight over the leftmost gun that means i have manual control over it now i'm kind of shooting poorly right now because i'm kind of watching that guy that needed to be clicked on and I got some more I need to click on but you can individually control guns which is nice or you can choose to control all of them so in this case I hit the space bar or held down the space bar rather and you can see all of them light up or I can hold down one and two and still leave number three to be controlled it's actually pretty cool I really do like that there's you know for as much as I complain about some of those little things there's a lot of thought that's been put into this game that I do appreciate that is one of those things right there being able to choose which gun you want to control is super handy. Now, it just so happens that the AI is so terrible that I kind of want to control all of them, but it would be nice to not have to do so. 
it'd be nice to just control some of them and maybe, you know, leave a, uh, a machine gun or something to be controlled by the AI to get rid of personnel. But personnel isn't really a big problem in this game, so I don't know. It's, uh, you know, it's six of one, half a dozen of another. Oh, got some more guys to click on, so let's go ahead and get rid of them. One thing that I do kind of wish, too, is that it would tell you how many waves you have going. If you, maybe you're playing one of the longer waves and you just kind of get distracted or maybe something happens and you need to pause the game for a while and you come back, you're not really going to know how many waves you have, or at least I don't think you will. I'm I'm not 100% sure. It's a little, um, it's a little imprecise in that way. But again, this is an early access game. It is still in development. This is by no means a completed game. So some of these problems I have, especially not being able to choose a resolution and not being able to play in a windowed mode, you know, it's fine. I, I can only assume or hope that those will be patched in at some point. I, I don't know. I mean, it just, it kind of seems so. And if you're wondering why that's a problem, let me just go ahead and talk about that a little bit. So I have what I would call a fairly non-standard monitor. I have a... 34 inch monitor now it's not your standard 34 inch like a tv it's literally a monitor it's not a tv but it also has a very non-standard resolution my monitor has a resolution of 3440 by 1440 so chances are most people don't have a monitor with that resolution it might not be a problem for you but for me this is a pretty big deal because I end up with the game playing in, I, I don't even know what resolution it plays in. It forces it to full screen and I spent, oh, I don't know, quite a bit of time with my recording software trying to figure out what resolution it was, rec it was playing in and I couldn't figure it out. At the end of the day, I had to change my actual desktop resolution to 1920 by 1080 which royally screws with everything I have. It just, it really messes things up for me. You know, everything gets rearranged, etc., etc. It's a small thing. It absolutely is a small thing. I totally understand that. But sometimes it's the small things like that that are far more obnoxious than the big things. I just, I don't know. I mean, I, I have this monitor for, well, numerous reasons. One of them is because I do a lot of video production work, as you may know if you're familiar with my channel. So I like being able to have a large monitor that lets me see everything without having to use multiple monitors. Not a big fan of multi-monitors. It's, it's fine, but for me, it doesn't work out as well as a single large monitor does. That's just my own workflow. Yours, yours may vary. But for me, I just like my big goofy monitor, and I really am annoyed that this game doesn't let me use my big goofy monitor in the way that I have to this point used my big goofy monitor so it's just a little annoying like that nope you're not going to shoot i'm going to do all the shooting because you're terrible at it but again these are really kind of minor things and i i totally get that and if you're playing in you know normally playing your games full screen i normally play my games in a window because again i have all sorts of stuff that i'm keeping track of while i'm playing i generally have i don't know five things going that i'm watching in a, well, inclusive of the game. So for me, it's kind of a big deal, but for you, it may not be. But that aside, I do have to say, and I want to make sure I underscore this, I do see a good game underneath my minor quibbles. I absolutely do. I think once this game gets a little more work into it and things are basically where they're supposed to be, little work gets done, some more things are fleshed out. I think, I really think they're going to have a good game on their hands. It isn't bad right now, and I really, I don't mean to, to imply that it's bad. I just, I'm frustrated more than anything by some of their decisions, and I get it. You know, it's early access. Maybe they didn't think it would be a big deal, and maybe it really isn't a big deal for 99% of the customers, in which case it probably doesn't make sense to to worry about these things. I'm definitely in a weird small percentile and I'm aware of that. But I suspect that more people than just me are going to be kind of annoyed and want to play in a window or at the very least want to change the resolution or 
lower the sound or lower the music volume, but you know, those are things that come with time. Granted, those are usually in the game before you actually get the game and are, well, testing stuff, but you know, minor details aside. But for now, I'm going to call this an episode and we can continue on if you'd like to see a little more of this game. Like I said, it actually gets to be pretty exciting once you get some better equipment going on and uh, maybe I'll go do that. But for now, I'm going to go back to the docks and call it an episode. So I hope you enjoyed. This is, uh, like I said, it's, it's a good game underneath my minor problems and I really probably shouldn't go into it as much as I have on all those little things because they're not going to be problems for most. But I definitely am enjoying it and uh, if you want to pick it up, it's on Steam. Go take a look at it. Reviews right now are mixed and part of that is because of some of these weird issues. Part of it is because when the game launched, it had some ads in the launcher that are no longer there. In fact, the launcher goes away on its own. So those, that at least that little thing is not a problem and the devs took care of that right away. So anyway, if you'd like to see more about this one, let me know. Otherwise, I will catch you on another episode. So till then, thanks for watching. See you later.